Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of It's Ever Sunny in Duskfall. I think this is episode 21. So, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are playing Blades in the Dark, a role-playing game about uh, criminals and crimes in a um, industrial a dark plus criming. Yeah, a plus criming in a dark industrial fantasy world. Uh, but really, we're we're more about just running a tea drug den and it, it two in two locations uh just trying to make everything work and bad things just keep happening to us and getting sucked into random we plots also have and a theater things. very respectable yeah, but theater no not anymore <laughs> it's not respectable anymore no. that's fair no that was one of the downs anyways yeah watch out watch the, the previous episodes um yeah so i'm eric i'm the game master um Part of being a game master here in Blades, as always, is um, I have some agenda rules that I'm supposed to, or items I'm supposed to follow. I'm supposed to be a fan of the players. I'm supposed to bring Duskfall to life and make it dark and gritty, and um, play see what happens. I think it's the other one, and make clocks for everything. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, yeah, let's. But let's. When about you say me. stuff like make clocks, I, I I picture like the guy going like shots, 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 oh. except clocks. Clocks, clocks. I imagine that I can just press a button on my headset and a little like monocle thing comes over and I can just grab a little screwdriver and just go, welcome to making clocks. Uh, <laughs> that's that's um, not as, did as you know, exciting. I mean, did you know, guys know that the inside of clocks, the mechanisms are called the complications of a watch? Did you know they're called I the complications? I did not know that. I, I love not. that. That's yeah. really exciting, actually. So that's very cute. Uh, that's almost as good as a murder of crows. It is for sure. <laughs> so, Asani, what's up? How are you? Hi, I am pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here, yeah. like doing the criming and leading this group. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, I play Vale, our slide and kind of de facto leader, because I make people listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would say more than de facto leader. You are the leader based on how much experience you get each session being the leader. <laughs> I mean, like, no one elected me. No one agreed. I just kind of seized the reins and ran with them. <laughs> yep. That's, yep. Cool. So, anything new with you? Everything's cool? Um, not really. I'm kind of dialing back my sign schedule because crunch time with uh, the school program that I'm in. So. Yeah. Mostly focused on that, but doing some board games on Sundays. So um, I'm actually getting real close to my one year anniversary of Sign. Yay. On That's Valentine's awesome. Day. Yeah. We, our first episode was on Valentine's Day last year. Yeah. And we played Secret Hitler. So next weekend, we're playing Secret Hitler again. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Wow. One year. It's crazy. Leavington. Paul. Hello. Hey, uh, what's new with you? I, I just came off like a really big salt bender playing Blood Bowl. Ooh. Which is like uh, it's like a Warhammer yeah. tabletop game, but you're Fantasy playing football. football. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, sometimes like you roll a lot of die six and sometimes the dice just fuck you. Uh, and and that's what happens. And it's like, man, I would have won so easily had I just rolled dice. Not a one. Yes. And, and like, I'm not I'm not generally a salty person when I play games, and especially those kind of games. Like, kind of blows over me. But holy crap, that last game, the stupid stupid dwarfs that were just punching all my dinosaurs in the face. Oh. I've never, seen, I've never played Blood Bowl. I've watched a couple people play a couple episodes of it. It seems pretty, like... It seems actually incredibly interesting. It has this kind of, like... Yeah, magical... so, like... Yeah, so the game itself is, like, super old. Like, you know, because it's, it's from Warhammer, and, and that yeah. stuff is, like, from the 80s. And I think it's it's really not that long after that, that like, the Blood Bowl mod for that game was out. So, like, it... There's a lot of like different teams and different skills, and it, it's very tactical. 
Uh, but like, if you mess up, then like your turn is over and it goes to the other side. So uh, it, it, it's always like hanging on this precarious mm. edge. Uh, and and I, I think it's really interesting. They're coming out with a couple of new races, uh, I think Tuesday. Wow. The Kenry, which are like, uh, uh, like mummies uh, and stuff like that. And the Chaos Dwarfs, which are dwarfs, but they also get to have crazy mutation stuff. Uh, but I play in uh, with Crendor and Strippen. They have, make a league like every couple of weeks just so the team stay fresh and it's not like the super veteran team that like crushes everyone. Underneath oh. oh, that's cool. So they made up a league? So there's like a league? So like, there's like impromptu league support? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like they they have one main league, like just from the game itself, and like the yeah. majority of people are in there. But a after a while, out. you you run into like these crazy strong uh, teams that yeah. like it, it's really not fun anymore. Yeah, I uh, can see that. Okay, no, so, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool, but you know it it can be really salt inducing. So I, I'm coming I'm coming off that now. Yeah. When everything is like a 2d6 roll, yeah, it's pretty... You get, you get salty. So hopefully my dice luck is a bit better here. Uh, or else I'll just, I'll just be the You've been, you have been rolling exceptionally well for Seer I mean, we the been. past couple weeks. So. Uh, but Just don't get into situations where you need to roll dice. Problem solved. Yeah, roll Tinker. Or just flashback to a way to get you out of rolling dice. <laughs> but yeah, I'm playing Seer. Uh, I'm a leech. Uh, I'm a saboteur and an alchemist, uh, and I have a strange affair with a hot vampire, uh, and I'm excited to play. Yeah, that's good. Kelsa. Hey, Kelsa. Hello, everybody. I'm Kelsa. Um, I play a lot of role-playing games on the internet, so um, if you if you like what you see, you should follow me and find out more, because after this game, I'm going to play in another game, and then I'm in a game, uh, and that's the Sprawl, um, and then I, pl I run a game of Blades in the Dark on Mondays, uh, and then I play in also Burning Wheel and Apocalypse World, so there's a lot of games going on that I'm part of, and they're all really cool. Yeah, um, so many games. Yeah, a lot of games. Um, and today I am playing uh, Jewel, who is a hound and has a pet monkey and a pet giant spider. She's kind of a badass. Yeah, for sure. Well, we kind of all are badasses as our characters are pretty pretty well leveled up since, since the beginning of the game. I mean, that's, that's legit. That I is think, legit. I think Jewel is specifically built to be the baddest of asses, though. Yeah. That is true. That is very true. Yes. So let us go to the character screen for now. Um, so who wants to do the recap from what we did last session? Maybe for, for a free I did it last session, but it, was, but it was very poorly. <laughs> All right. Anyone? Uh, I I can do it, uh, but I don't have a whole lot of stress. So if I yeah. have one stress. All right. I, I'll I'll take it then. Uh, last time, on it's never sunny in Duskfall. Um, we had some bad news because like the the FBI, uh, the the Imperial Guard is rolling into town. Uh. With all the all the crap that's that's been going on, which we may or may not be related to, uh, I mean, mostly not, but you know, it's, it, it could possibly be. Uh, but yeah, they 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 show up. There's this um, uh, lady from the Dagger Isles whose name I forget at the moment. I think I have it somewhere. Uh, Ramira who is like a spy master and she's rolling up with her crew of Imperial Guard to, to make Duskfall great again. Uh, and they came in through the, the rail station in the night market uh, and, and uh, we did a job helping out our, our friends from the Hive uh, smuggle some stuff out before uh, like that place was too locked down. Uh, and 
we found out that they're moving on towards the dark district. So really, they're controlling everything that's coming in and out. Uh, and we, as a crew, uh, prepared ourselves for the oncoming storm. Uh, Jewel and Vale had a little inquisition uh, in the crew, uh, which luckily turned out we don't have any traders yet because it's uh, yet. Apparently, that's how those those uh, imperial operators work. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the the plant spies and moles, and eventually someone will sell out someone. Uh, but. Uh, we seem clean for now, and uh, and then uh, Seer had a very romantic date that totally flubbed with Vampire Senpai. Yeah, it was going so well, and then like emotions or whatever, <laughs> feelings. I don't know. And then feelings, and then the feelings, yes. mm, and then yes. feelings. Yeah. Then the feeling nation attacked, and then it was bad. <laughs> Yeah. So, but I, I think that's what happened last time. No, that was a good recap. Thank you. Go ahead and and give yourself um, recovering one stress. Yes. Telling us about last episode, or last session. So, who who wants to do some stuff in this game? I feel like that Betrayal Vale had your, had yeah. a plan. Yeah. So the the lockdown of the docks is clock just for the records, is, is halfway done. So. I had a plan. I don't know. I thought you did. I, I don't... I don't think I had a plan. <laughs> I think I think halfway done of that clock means that there are ships in the channel. I mean... Hmm. Well, alright. Like, I don't think that's a thing we can realistically prevent from happening, right? No. no, we just so, gotta kind of work around it, I think. So, do we have any like big stuff happening do we in have, the docks? Like, a, like... St a smuggler contact that we can make sure we're still getting our tea in. Like our drugs are kind of taken care of because we worked out that deal with the hive to be like, yes, we will totally agree to let you store your stuff in our basement. That's a completely mutual decision that you didn't force on us at all, as long as we still get to use that supply. Um, I mean, I remember how that went. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. And, uh, but, but you had said that there was a concern that we might not have, uh, a supply of tea, like actual legit tea anymore. And so, um, I think, um, that, that maybe looking into that was something we were going to do maybe. Or the possibility of just moving around our, our assets to make sure that uh, they weren't going to get stomped out by so yeah uh, Imperiums. Since, it, since it's just tea, like I don't think we need to go to a smuggler because I mean supposedly they will still allow import and export of stuff as so long as think? it's legitimate. I mean that's that, that is what I think. I mean there hasn't been a train in over a week. They've completely shut down the rail station. Really? Hmm. I'm gonna be honest, my thought is to get out and watch this blow over, but that's gonna have repercussions too. Oh yeah. We could do that, but um just to give you an idea as a GM, I think if you do that and you, it blows over, I think then we like wipe like you know, a couple months yeah, or something no goes by, yeah, and exactly. then you're like basically yeah, would... back at square zero, and like the whole city, yeah. you know, it churned. Uh, yeah. to, to steal to steal a quip from the expanse. <laughs> um, things were caught up in the churn. Oh man, uh, that shit was so good. It's so good. It's so, good. Uh, so, so so like yeah, it, it's it's like just normal goods import export. Is that is that gonna be a problem? Maybe we should find out what their plan is. That'd like, be, yeah. Gather some information, get some intel, and then 
see how other people are trying to get around that and then maybe get in on whatever they're getting in on. Yep. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. I like it. Uh, we're also still um, at war um, with uh, the silence. Um, who yeah, we the don't silence know is the best way. Who they are <laughs> or uh, how to recognize them. Uh, it's kind of a problem. The unseen, but yeah. <laughs> yep. As I said. Yeah, so there's a lot of things we can do. Um, this can either be... I know last time we kind of finished up uh, a heist and we did some downtime. I, this could probably be free play or might be downtime. Um, depends on, I think, maybe the nature and the risk of what we're trying to do and how much, you know, if time's a factor and that kind of stuff. We, we finished our downtime for last time, though, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, starting okay, a new just, game... I'm just like, saying. Like starting a new session, um, you know... So, okay, so maybe... Maybe we can talk with the hive. We could spend money for downtime, is what I'm saying. But we we don't have any downtime actions left, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So 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 here's a, a proposed plan. Uh, why don't we talk to the hive? Because they uh, they have like legitimate business as well, right? Like That's they. A good idea. They will probably know what's going on with with import and export, and then maybe. We can talk with them uh, and see if they want to hang out with the unseen and uh, see if we can make a peace during this time of, you know, other war. Like, we don't have to fight amongst ourselves if we have a common enemy. Okay. Because mm -hmm. those guys are bad for everyone. All right. So, um, that's a little... But let's okay. start with that. Let's start with that first thing, because that might mean that we have to like go secure either a large shipment somewhere or get a good, uh, good in with a with a smuggler or something, because that would, to me, would seem more important than making peace with these unseen fellows. Okay. Right. So we'll we'll talk to Miguel if he's still around with us. Uh, yeah, I mean they're staying at your place, so that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, like like if he knows, if we can talk to someone who knows, because he and and we'll you know we'll impress on him, like hey, like if we don't have a front, we're gonna lose his business. If we're gonna lose a business, then you guys can't like put your stuff here anymore. You guys can't deal with us anymore. Like it's gonna be bad all around, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. So, like, can we talk to someone who knows about this stuff? Yeah, no, I think I think talking to Miguel would be great. Um, right. So yeah, you, we'll, we'll gather uh, Vale for sure because because she's the business person. I don't think you're in a lot of danger, but yeah, I think I think the big question would be how much she actually knows, and so I think that might come down to the uh, the role from talking to him. So, sure. Is that a, like a just a fortune roll? Um, no. I, I think I think basically. All right. So what I'm thinking is someone someone recently brought up the 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 twist of Blaze in the Dark and a way to think of it. Um, and I think it's actually in the book here. Is that your position is the um exposure to danger modifier dial. And your effect is greatness of success dial. Yeah. So I mean, I feel like this is your exposure probably... to failure is really low here. So it's probably around um, controlled. It's also also because you're kind of talking to him in his house. But um, your your chance of success here. I mean, depends. On, okay, so you're really trying to figure out what the hive already know. I mean, if you're not sure what they know, then you rolling a die of fate to find out would be one thing. Yeah. Uh, and then that's what I was kind of thinking. Um, and, and then if they would just tell us, there's no reason for us to make like a consult roll here. Yeah. But if it's something they might not want to share, then we may still also need a consult roll. Yeah. Okay. I think I know what it is. And I, I think I want. I think I want to hear from you after you start talking to Miguel. Um, I don't think the hive are that concerned about imports and exports however i think it's because they know that this is going to disrupt a lot of trade but you know they have their ins and outs 
Um, and so they're going to get, they see this as a, uh, a profit making opportunity, you know, a way to like exploit, uh, the shortages. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, I, don't, I don't think they're like smug about it. Like, so probably like Miguel's like, uh, if you if, talking to Miguel, um, he kind of just yeah, mentions it, that, you it, know, things, yeah, like this is like a, a contingency that they kind of have in place, you know, they're yeah. like, okay, we go to ground. Um, it's kind of, they're like, oh, they're kind of like, like a like a mold where, you know, it's like, okay, time to spore, you know, just like, just shut down, um, hold on to things. Uh, don't really grow and expand until things blow over. And then when it's clear, we go out again. Yeah. We're going to make lemonade right. out yeah. of all these lemons. Yep. Yeah. It's probably uh, like the contingency, it's contingency lemonade. But yeah, uh, Sierra then uh, brings up like, do you, you know, we're good friends. Do you think uh, you could help one of them, like a tea supplier? Uh, get us either in contact with them or just, you know, do the deal for us? Oh, you're worried about the legitimacy of this place. Of course. Now, more than ever, we have to see... Um, I, think Miguel, I think Miguel's going to barter with you here and say... Um, I think you say, don't worry about it. We can make the, we can just give you the money and profits, but there won't be any tea. But like, it's, it'd be easier for us to just kind of cook the books and just kind of float you money than it would be to get tea. How do you feel about that? He doesn't ask you how you feel about that. I'm asking you, um, Seer, you know, how does Seer feel about uh, Miguel being like, oh, don't worry about the legit legitimacy of that, of, of you know, we'll we'll take care of all that stuff. We're it's it's the least we can do staying with you, right? Uh, I don't think Seer is okay with this because that will make them like super dependent on the hive, right? Like yeah. even if 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 like the books seem right, uh, like we're 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 too dependent on the hive, and they're and they're like a bigger fish, and it it's like kind of iffy because we want to be a big fish. Like Seer is not super into this but he's not well, the only one in this meeting you're also both at war with the same group yeah so they they kind of are yeah um so what you so what you know right now right so so let's establish some key things tea is going to be hard to come by the hive doesn't have access to tea to give you right now um but instead they're they're floating you the um the chance to just give you uh, money and like their accountant services and stuff to you know kind of just like smooth over any type of paperwork which for all intents and purposes is truthful and 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 would be fine in in the eyes of the duskfall law uh i don't know it's, it's like thinking of like you know i guess we could just not do tea but uh what what do you guys think uh, fail and jewel. I mean, because <sighs> this is not a thing like here. Out with, of character, I think we should get the tea to keep up appearances. And if we're the only tea house in all of Duskfall that can can maintain having tea, then we're gonna get legitimate clientele in addition to our other business. However, in character, I don't think Jewel gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so, um, that's my two cents. Nice. I yeah. am definitely on board with Kelsa in that her thought that we need to give the tea. But at the same time, if we're the only people who have tea, that may be suspicious and raise flags. So I'm almost wondering if there's something that we could do where it would make sense for us to have this product. It would be something that we could sell, maybe something that Sear could make up in his lab hey. and would still be along the same sort of lines of our current business, but without seeming like we're smuggling in tea and then raising eyebrows at us, because why do we have tea and no one else a does? A tea speakeasy? 
a speak teasy. <laughs> we like still do drugs and hookers in the front, <laughs> but tea in the back. <laughs> yeah, but you got to know the code word to get to the tea. Oh, that's great, I'm just I saying, if tea is gonna be illegal, yeah. I mean, it's not illegal to have it, but 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 that would mean like I, I we would make like herbal teas that are not really tea things. I mean, I think it's Maybe. probably better to not do. I mean, I'm sure people would love to watch us smuggle in tea and have all that shit hit the fans and then us deal with that, but. As a legitimate business person, my thought is don't rock the boat because we don't want these inspectors coming looking at us because then they're going to find drugs and hookers. All right. So, I mean, like, I, I can work on something that would be tea like product. Just some kind of drink that we can serve hot. And it's not going to fuck everybody up or kill anybody. Yeah. That's all I ask. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it seems like super beneath here. I know. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you know. Uh, you could do it though, uh, right? So beneath you that it'd be easy. Because it's like, you know, it's a bit of color and a bit of flavor. Like. Then make it, it awesome. But, but this is a very strange way to go about it. Uh, but like, yeah, we can do that. I think uh, I'll I'll start six. on that. Uh, but uh, so yeah, let's just take their money, let them float our books. Because why not? If they're gonna give us money, let's take it, and then let's just make our own product. Um, let me roll a die of fate here because I have an idea. Oh God! <laughs> no, okay, it's gonna be on evens, but that's fine. Okay, sure, go cool. ask. All right, don't worry about it, fellas. No, I, I was, I was kicking along a different idea, but don't worry, I'll, I'll just keep that in my pocket for for a later game. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right, then I guess we're gonna be okay. I don't think there's any, there's no roll or anything because that's just the status quo. Um, I don't know, I, I, but I still think we need to do something. Um, okay, what is the something? Well, I, I mean, our next score, obviously. Uh, I don't have an idea, though. I don't have a cool idea. Um, do you have a cool idea? Well, the Imperial agents are, you know, they're closing down on Duskfall like a vice. There's going to be a lot less space to go. Um. Uh, jeez. If you want, like, okay. So, so trying to make peace with the unseen, uh, or like a truce somehow. It, yeah. Right. Yeah. Just so we're not at war anymore, so we don't suffer from that. That's uh, a good idea. We could see if we could get rid of ten penny courts. I know we worked hard to get that, but it's like super far away from the rest of our operations. But it's, it's our feet, which it's our clothier part. though. Oh, fuck it is. No, God it's it. it's still good though. Could, I mean, it's you still seed it. Yeah. It's it's. <sighs> it just it has a bit or, of a bad or, reputation right now, but like it's why would money. be losing us money? It just it's just there. So let's why get rid of it? It's good real estate, man. <laughs> I, like yeah, uh, those are those are ideas. I, I I would probably go with trying to get peace or a truce or whatever with those unseen, but I'm not sure how to go about that because they're super mysterious. Yeah, you have the final. Maybe they we want. should we should try to find out what the hive has learned about them since we gave them that captive. That sounds like a veil job. <laughs> So I think after we have this conversation with Miguel, I steer the conversation towards our um, mutual enemy. The our unseen. other mutual enemy. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think I just kind of bring them up and see if he volunteers any information. Because I'm like, you know, they're kind of a problem. They're kind of yeah. a thorn in our side. 
um, yeah, he says, uh, it took a while, but they learned that, uh, the thing you captured is called the star. Um, apparently he is high up in the ranks of the unseen. Uh, we're still we're still trying to figure out the kind of how the unseen operate, like their hierarchy and stuff like that. However, we know that this guy is a key player in, in some way. So, um, and what we're is kind the of plan? well, the plan was kind of to cut. Um, you know, they think. Um, I'm sure I'm sure Miguel doesn't say it this way, but to us, uh, he says something. You know, like they cut off. They feel like they cut off maybe the head of the snake. So they're trying to see like what changes. Um, and, and kind of measure the effects based on the outcomes of, of kind of like, okay, so we took out your leader. What happens now? How do things change? Uh, to, like, you know, what, uh, you know, does someone like, cause that might be a power, maybe it's going to be a power struggle and they can like kind of get an idea of where these like sparks of violence might happen. It could be that like they need something now that he was helping out with. And so they can kind of like see what they, they need, what, how this, how this organization operates, um, in order to, um, to come at them but basically they're they're going to use this as kind of a um an experiment they were just trying to observe mm -hmm. the uh the impact of this guy and not being here and in you know i want to push forth the idea that they could use the star being out of play and the trouble with the inspectors now being present in duskwell to push forth, like, I don't want to say a piece. Hold on, hold on. You said the inspectors? These are not the inspectors. These I'm are sorry. imperial agents. The agents. Yeah. My bad. Okay. <laughs> um, so with the agents being in Duskfall, the star being captured, I don't want to say peace because I don't think the hive would go for that. No. But maybe... A detente. I put... Like, I, I push forth the idea of maybe using that to kind of pressure the unseen to maybe do a stay of hostilities. Yeah. Between our groups. Yeah. I, I kind of... A detente. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally the word for what the thing that you're saying. Yeah, that then. <laughs> the, easing, the easing of hostility of or strained relations, especially between countries, but in this case, factions. Yeah. You're not... You're not they're, like there's still a war, but it's like let's let's calm down. Let's settle this later. We yeah, have other. This things This is what to the do. U.S. and Russia did for a while, like under Gorbachev and stuff. They were like, yeah, we got nukes, so let's let's maybe let's like not keep <laughs> ramping stuff up. And yeah, so it's called a detente. Okay. Yeah. Um. They don't. Uh, that's like they they're interested in that because they have a lot to go on and it'd be really it would be really great to have their like hand no longer tied uh, trying to shore up the unseen and dealing with them however they don't really know how to get in contact with the other members and uh, the star can't doesn't really help them there maybe that's our next job then trying to find the unfindable it's possible. Though so I'm worried what's going to happen if we do. <laughs> yeah. So does anyone have maybe a contact that would be... Uh, could be a vector for this social plan? I mean, my only contact that would I, I would say would have this information definitely literally told me not to trust him. And... Oh, but... Like, like he was like, when, when things get rough, right? Like, they're still, they're still installing their vice before they start squeezing. So I think we'd, we'd still be okay. I don't know. It's up to you, though. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to speak mm -hmm. for you. Um, I also have Celine, a sentinel on my friends list. I don't think we've ever interacted with her before. No, I don't even know what, what a sentinel is. Besides, I was going to say, I don't know what a sentinel is either, but what if we go ahead and declare that that makes 
her part of the um like the imperial um like the local imperial force that normally just is like honor guard on the bridge to white crown or some other bullshit you know oh, okay yeah yeah no i get that um yeah like like but, but part she's of like kind of governor's reven uh retinue yeah 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 okay um but like she's like a um i i feel like maybe she's like a a, a, a local um who has like familiar ties to uh maybe uh the the pirates which is where jewel knows her from okay like i I like i'm just inventing this backstory out of my butt right now so (laughs) feel free to put the kibosh on it but like what if like uh Celine's brother was on the pirate ship with Jewel um, before whatever caused her to to leave piracy uh, behind, and like Jewel met Celine when she like had to be like, "I'm so sorry about your brother," but then like they went out for drinks and hit it off and like became friends, and later Jewel learned that she was a sentinel and charged with protecting the the governor, and was like. Oh, this is awkward. But they kept in Ooh. touch, you know. <laughs> so you're hoping that she might know. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let me let me do a fortune roll. Let's see how good that goes. Sure. Um. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's gonna set you. She's gonna. Um, yeah, this is gonna go can, great. She thinks she can set you up. Um, okay. So this is probably. Um, yeah, it's fine. Well, don't worry about it. I definitely didn't see what those numbers were. Those, those are probably like desperate. So it's let's say it's um <laughs> desperate standard. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna roll it. Let's do it. I want I want some XP me roll my consort so she's so she's agrees she says she she's going to meet with you um let's say in the docks of course because you know the docks are definitely a place to go right now yeah so she gives you an address in the docks okay are you going alone um I went alone last time. You don't have to. Uh I mean, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll um, tell you guys where I'm going and if you want to come with me. Yeah. So, I'm like If you want to uh, yeah, if you want to and if and as things will inevitably go horrible, um if you want <laughs> to be like and I can flash back to like us following you from the rooftop nearby or whatever, fellas, that's totally fine. Okay. Yeah, right. but like, so she's gonna she's gonna go to to Vale and say, um, "Listen, I think I've tapped my resource in Valeris as far as getting information about these Imperials, but I have a friend that works in right, White Crown, a Sentinel of the Governor. She's agreed to meet me down by the docks. I was hoping I could get some more information from her." The docks. Are you going alone? I'll have Mr. Bubbles with me. But she was like, no, no, she's not. And he's like putting on this coat. We know that's where the agents are striking next. They've already started locking it down. Right under their noses. Seems opportune. Do you think you'll have need of me? I'm not much of a fighter, but I can talk my way out of most problems. Do you think that will be useful? Mm. I'm not much of a talker. Do you expect to do much of it? 
If things go right, that's all I'm gonna do. Let me grab my coat. All right. Nice. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> all right. So let's go ahead and um. Smash cut to the uh, walking into the pub where we're meeting or whatever. Maybe a small montage of we're like well, this, walking yeah. through the burned out husk of uh, the docks. The docks. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So let's go with a. Uh... I mean, I, I think I feel like this is probably going to be some kind of like consort or some kind of social role. That was the plan. Um, Desperate standard. Yeah. Does somebody want to give me a helping hand veil? I mean, I could either help you or I could lead a group action. Okay. Um, well, I feel like I would be leading the group action, but yeah, we could do yeah, definitely. The, con- the obvious action. consequence here is that you'll be set. You're getting set up. I mean, that seems pretty obvious. Yeah. So I accept these consequences. Um, plus, if we all roll a group action, we all get XP. That's true. Um, do you have the stress to deal with if we yeah, fail? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm, I'm cool. I, 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 think, I think fictionally, Sir is not really part of the talking and he's more like lookouty. Like maybe he just like gets in the front and hangs around by the door, see if someone like leaves suspiciously as soon as he sees you, that sort of stuff. So I don't cool. think he's part of this group action, but he's near. Okay. Yeah, so Jewel goes and sits down at the table where Celine is because I, I picture like she's already there when we arrive. Oh yeah, and uh, and she like gestures to Vale to join them. Is like, this is my friend Vale. Pleasure. Listen, we've had a lot of changes around here. Just hoping you could tell us a little more. Um, she's like, yeah, I know. There's a lot. Uh, that's that's coming to to Duskfall. Um, I think she kind of is like feigning sympathy towards like the governor who, from last episode, is arrested. So I think there's some kind of like loyalty or whatever, and like and not all good. Um, so mm. hopefully this 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 gets you um, the right information that you need, and um, now make your roll. Okay. Uh, I'm going to push myself because this is kind of tense. And... All right. And then standard Four. effect. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, carrying over from last session, but I get XP. <laughs> yes, you do. <sighs> All right, so you I, rolled, I, I you rolled a stress. four. Um, that's that's a partial. It's a partial. No, that, yeah, that that's a succeed it's with 16, a major but... complication. Yeah, yeah, it's a major. Right? Com- it's fine, fine. Complications are fine. Hmm. Then I think. Um... Okay, so it was my idea that you were going to get actually attacked by Imperial agents um, surrounding this place. But now I think, because you got a four, it's actually going to be the Unseen instead. Damn. Um, so much better. Well, how about, fuck it, I'm a GM. Um, so <laughs> you we're going to have Imperial want- agents, um, we're going to have Unseen disguised as Imperial agents showing up. Holy shit. So, is that worse or better? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I no, think, I think coming... they are. They what they are is they're unseen that have been converted into imperial agents, but then actually their secret programming is unseen, pulls up again, and they're. <laughs> no, well, yeah, kind of. Um, so here's, here's what people. happens. Here's here's the scene that I see in my head, um, like like. For, we hear um like the the doors come through like get smashed through um and like a squad of 
of Imperial agents come in. Um, I think the Imperial agents all wear, um, not like, not a baklava. Help me out, guys. They don't wear masks, but they wear something that, like, keeps them, maybe they wear kind of some kind of, like, helmet that, like, obscures most of their face. Um, so they're not really that super identifiable. And, yeah, I think they yeah. come in and, you know, like, by, by the, um, the governor or whatever, they're under arrest and, uh, arrest. And I think we see... Um, your friend, I think we see Celeste go, um, like, this isn't, she, like, she, I think she did set you up, but this isn't right. Like, this, she wasn't expecting this to happen. And she's like, something's not, this isn't right. And she's like, hold on, I'm like, this is, listen, these are my friends, whatever, and, and, like, you're only supposed to arrest them, and I think they kind of, like, hit her, uh, but, like, like, a baton or whatever, and she's like, she backs up, she's like, this isn't good at all. Um, and then she's, and I think, I think we're going to start where she's like, this is bad. Like, like, let's get out. Like, you know, um, I'm so sorry. (laughs) And so now, um, your friend who betrayed you is going to help you here because it really is her butt's on the line right now too. And things are not going right at all as some guards and stuff are showing up here, um, between Vale and, um, Jewel. I'm deciding how I'm going to be. Well, hold on a second. Okay. Yes, Vale, I listen to you. <laughs> I have my subterfuge special armor that allows me to resist a consequence from suspicion or persuasion, which is what this is. Okay, then we're going to dial it back one, and maybe like you hear the floorboards creak, and then we're there. Right? So instead of like a, a, a harder move, it's a softer move. Um, is that how armor is that how because like that's how that's how you prevent a consequence like i don't know your armor yeah. ablates the consequence from being this like in your face right now to um a step further back that's how i'm interpreting it does that sound reasonable yeah um could so I, I i don't know how to i don't know how if you can negate any consequence how i can make anything well i can only I mean? do it once and and <laughs> when you when you resist a consequence, it doesn't automatically negate it. it yeah. It stepping stepping down as appropriate is. Yeah. I mean, it, if there was a reason why it would make sense to eliminate completely, then yes. But if you're going from uh, a, a a desperate action and the consequences of a desperate action, stepping it back to the consequences of like a risky action makes sense. Yeah, that's um, basically. And so the- yeah hear the creak of the floorboards and Seer yeah. who has been on lookout this whole time. Can like, I like, yeah, yeah. Set you up for something like, like hinting yeah. you guys of like, uh, I don't think these guys are, uh, we want these guys here. So get ready for whatever, uh, with survey, I suppose is the, the appropriate action. How, but yeah, but how are you going to warn them? Uh, with a, a whistle or something like that, you know, a signal. Like they, they know, the they signal. know I'm there Remember? and that I'm not. We have our whole cover operation, like hand gestures and stuff from last episode. Yeah, but how are you going to get a hand we gesture? We spent the entire time in, 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 in the docks. Like you're like in a secret room. How is he going to get to you? No, he's in the secret room. Like he's he's holding. He's like he, he watching was standing the outside watching the door. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought he was watching the whole door time the outside. That makes more no, sense. No, no. Oh, okay, my bad. All right, that gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I, I mean, it's it's just to set you guys up. So I'm gonna survey. What's my position here? Um, risky. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna start at limited. Okay. Because these guys are pretty well he- concealed, and so I think I know you want to find them, but it's going to be difficult. So I think I think we're going to say limited right now. Okay. Um. See if I have anything. Not really. Uh, I think I'm just going to roll for it. Uh, and and we'll kind of see what happens. Okay. Five. 
Okay, so five with the consequence. Um, ooh. Um, I think maybe you are able... I want to put you in a, in a spot where you're going to have to make a choice. Yeah. Um, I think this is like moments before they like come in. Mm -hmm. And you know that you're going to like, I think they're going to come in from like two ways, right? One of them is going to put you and um, Vale in danger. And then the other way would mostly put um, uh, Jewel and Celeste in danger. And you really mm -hmm. have to like, which one, which one do you want to uh, help right now? Like as like, you realize like, you know, you hear like the floor creak. You hear like the door get like knob like kind of turn on both sides, and now you really really have one chance to kind of like really like reinforce and stop one one side here. Uh, um, I'm gonna you spot them both, but you only have time to react to one essentially. Yeah. Which one do you choose? So I'm gonna choose for myself and Vale because I think Jewel can like punch your way out. Okay. <laughs> no, that's that's fair. It's okay. I brought my guns. Yeah. Uh, so, so okay so like that's going to be kind of like the consequence right now so like mm -hmm. if you wanted to like paint what this kind of looks like and what you're going to do to like stop these guys from coming in or whatever and, and we can just build from there all right so okay so i i like they come in uh like, I'm, giving I'm, you, I'm like i kind of feel like as right now as a gm i'm giving you the skeleton of like that's what it's going to kind of look like so it'll help me uh, yeah, describe yeah, what yeah. that looks like because you you're, you're the one making the roll, so I want to I want to hear what you wanna. So Seer is like signaling, and and like only Vale is like actually looking at him, and Jewel is like talking yeah. to to so her friend or whatever, yeah. and she's like like come on, you have to like pay attention to the the, the lookout. What are you doing? But you know he, he sees that like it's it's not gonna like she's yeah. just busy. She's not seeing it. She's not gonna be warned before shit hits the fan. So, uh, Seer is gonna, you know, having tipped off, Vale is gonna, like, slink into, like, a coat rack or something. So, hopefully they pass him by for now. Okay. Uh, and then, and then see from there. He doesn't want to, like, leave them, uh, by themselves. So, uh, I think a, a Prowl would be alright here. So you're going to try to sneak out or just hide in this building? I, I, I just want to hide in the same building because I want to be able to back up if shit goes down, which which it probably will. I I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave my crew, right? Okay, sure. Okay, I got it. I got it. All right. I so just don't want to deal with consequences right now. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. So they're going to take the, the, the uh, burden of this, of this um, arrest. Yeah. Okay. Why so, since um, Seer was able to warn me, am I able to react before the agents or unseen agents or whatever come in? Yeah, I think it's I think it's reasonable to say that. Um, yeah, like he 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 warns you with his survey, um, and he's he's trying to bring you over to this like he's like now <laughs> kind of thing, and there's not a lot of time to react at yeah. all. I think I just get up and go like um, I maybe I probably say one word but it's not super clear because I'm wearing my mask and I'm in a hurry and so I try to warn them as I'm getting up and leaving but maybe Jewel doesn't understand me or something and that's why she ends up why we get separated from this and you're just like what are you doing and I'm just beelining towards Seer. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So then, so then I guess then um, the next scene. Like, would do be... they come in through like the back door? Yeah, or something? and I think then maybe Vale and Seer are like gone right now. Like you guys just just yeah, that like, land, and we, all of a we... sudden they come through the door and it's just you two. Yeah, yeah. So like, like Vale just gets up and leaves, and and so like Jewel and, and Celine kind of like share like a what was that look. And in the time it takes for us to do that, the door bursts open and these guys come in and we kind of are like, oh shit. Yep, exactly. Um, so, that's where we're at. <clears throat> uh, 
So these guys look like Imperial agents. Is there any anything about their demeanor or anything that would clue me in that they are not just regular regular Imperial agents here? Um, I'm sure there is, but it would probably take some time to figure it out. I mean, I was going to shoot first and ask questions never. So I was just yeah. like, is there anything in the, in the moment between when I pull my guns and pull the trigger that would, uh, no. Oh, okay. No. Cause I, I think these guys are just like disguised as mer- like, they're like, you know, the hi- uh, unseen high of mercenaries and stuff. So. Yeah. I think these are guys. Uh, just... Yeah, these guys pull in and they look like Imperial agents, and I'm like, "Yep, shit." Yeah. Hope this doesn't look poorly on your record. <laughs> I'll fucking shoot these guys and kill them. Well, that's my okay. plan. Um, well, it's a gang of them trying to arrest you. Nope, they're dead. All just all of them. So I think you you definitely are going to have <laughs> um, some issues with tier and scale. Yeah, okay. I do have a fine pair of pistols, so that will be in my favor here. Yeah, that, um, that helps you with quality. Okay, so that, that negates the tier, but the scale's still a problem. So I think... I mean, so, that's that's fair. So I'm still seeing it is... Um, um, as limited. I'm not going to kill all of them. I risky guess limited. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Can I, like, do, like, a kick-ass backflip or something in order to make it more dangerous but get kill more of them? Like, you want to make it desperate, but... Yeah, de- desperate, but uh, standard instead of uh, limited. Yeah, you'll take a lot of harm. I, I feel like what's that what's that play there is then... Um, you're gonna yeah, hurt, make you it desperate by badly. shooting them, but also charging them, and then, like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm willing to take that. I'm, I'm, willing, to, I'm willing to do that. Um, I'm going to push myself... Uh, and like, oh. what about my uh, spider move? Ooh, yes. Tell me about your spider move and how you can help me from yeah. preparing me for the trade. I planned for this. <laughs> I, I planned that we might get p- betrayed, mm. and um, to help you, I got into our stash of special bullets, mm. and I made sure that you brought some, so you're so... extra harmful. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I don't think I don't think the special bullets help you out right now against normal people. What I'm saying though is that like they're not necessarily her special bullets. They're, they're not. They're not like electroplasmic bullets. They're like hollow tip bullets, or uh, yeah, because they're wearing armor, bullets. right? Like they they have some yeah, they're like armor, armor piercing rounds or something like that. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, so you want like desperate great effect then? Yeah, I, okay. I mean, like you kill I'll all t- of them. All right, I'll I'll definitely take that. Uh, I didn't change it to great from standard, but uh, there we go. Okay, well you got a five, so you succeed, yeah. but you took <laughs> you took a nasty hit then. Um, I think you're probably gonna take level two harm. Um, probably. So like mm-hmm. now we have like the that montagey like fight scene. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna use my battleborn to reduce uh, harm from an attack. Um, um actually, so... actually, I'm gonna throw it on you uh, mm. before I do that. Okay. You can you can either take level two. All right. Um. So I'm gonna make this a little. I'm gonna make this really hard on you. Uh, this is prior to battleborn stepping in. All right. Okay. Take you. I'm giving you the choice of you can either take level three harm, uh, or um, I think Celeste dies. Yeah, I definitely would be taking the harm and okay. not letting her die. Um, I I think I'm also wearing my heavy coat, which is armor in and of itself. And also Battleborn, which would step it down by two effects, but she's still, like, cut and bruised or grazed after this, which would be level one harm. Okay, yeah. If that works for that you. That makes sense, yeah. 
Um, just like like beat up and exhausted. Level one hundred, yeah. right? So like we just had this um calamitous uh close quarters fight or whatever. Um, I think you guys might have been watching it from the closet. <laughs> as like this huge scuffle goes through, and you just see, like see see, and all we see are just like Sears boots, um, and or not excuse me, that's Sears. Um, we see Celeste and Jules boots, like like back to back, and then we just see like more people just like falling, and like more shots and stuff, and then, you know, Jules and Celeste boots are are still up. Shit. Yeah. We need to get out of here now. And like she like and she's like takes... where, where did where did the rest of your your friends go? Yeah, we we can run some I... friends. Yeah, they just kind of left you here. He's coming running in now, like and he like has his pistol out and like everyone is down already. <laughs> <laughs> like, um... <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh Jesus! And then it's like you know you know to the to the back, there has to be like some sort of way out. Yeah. All right, so I think we're yeah. Like, I, I think Jewel like like takes Celine's hand and just is like, "Come on." All right, I think I think then um, we hear that like you know like there's other guards around being like you know I thought I might have heard something or whatever, so that we might have to go through like a prowl to get out of here. Okay. All right. Uh, I can I can lead that. So like well. the docks are like swarming with um, agents right now. Yeah. And Jules covered in blood. Yeah, most of it's not even her own. So, so I, I think I think the first priority is not really to not get seen, but to just physically be away from that place, uh, and hopefully not be seen. But that's that'll be up to the dice. Uh, so I'll I'll lead the prowl. Um. Wait, so is this gonna be are you gonna lead a group action of prowl? Yeah. Okay. And your your intention is to just get away from here as fast as possible? Yes. And and yeah. Um But like we don't I don't have time to like find but you're not gonna the be stealthy about it? But like, like we I try not to, but Or I try to, but it's not the priority. Like the then they this already isn't know. a prowl. This isn't a prowl, dude. The it's actually, you guys are gonna get cornered. You're going to actually have to make like a a resistance test. Then it'd be like they're in control, and you're trying to like resist with like prowess. Uh, that would be like getting away physically without anything, right? Because if you're not being stealthy, I don't see it as. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, sure. I feel like I feel because I also feel like you're not in control here. So all right. Well, in that case, I can I think? can resist. If if you don't think we're in control, will, then yes. then like a prowl roll just wouldn't happen at or, all. Or or if if you're not trying to be stealthy and you want to get out of here, it actually might be a, a group skirmish roll. So, which is like I, fucking just piecing out of here. Or or are you be? I I would also I could see an, a case for wreck if you were really cool. Um, you know what I mean? But it's not prowl. Yeah. Prowl would be I think a little bit too stealthy moving about. Yeah. Um. Like to be honest, I, I think I think there is some sort of attempt to prowl. Like we're not gonna go to the busiest street. We're not gonna go out the front. Like we're going at the back. We're sticking through alleys. Like hopefully no one is there, but we yeah. don't really know. I don't have time to scout. Okay, you're uh, doing your due diligence. Yeah. But... So I, I could see if the the position was crap or the effect yeah. was kind of low. Uh, yeah, then I think I think I do think we are prowl. Okay. trying to prowl. Uh, then I think it's gonna be limited. All right, um, that's fine. With uh... we just have um, to get to the sewers. There's, yeah, there's a lot of guards, so I, I think it's gonna be. I think we're gonna start with desperate limited. All right, uh, I I don't really have anything. Let me see. But you're leading a group action to prowl. Yeah. Cool. So here's my question. You know the, Since yeah. We're trying to prowl out of the docks. What if we just tried to prowl to the sewers? Would that increase our effect? Since we're kind of limiting our scope. No, like to get to the entrance of the sewers would be desperate limited. All right. Okay. 
I think I think but I think separating you Lloyd, if you, I think um between um I think I think between here and the sewers uh you know there's probably like a patrol of guards um even like through like the back alleys and stuff like that it's chance you could be seen so I think it's going to be desperate limited right now but if you want to be like I want to get halfway there or something like that we can change the circumstances right if you if you reduce the scope of your action you can change the um, position and effect. But to, so, get, to get to the sewers, it would be desperate limited. Yeah. If it's just like leave the building unseen. Then that's probably um, risky standard. All right. I'd like to get to like the um, the dark alleyway behind the building, right? Yeah. That, that would be risky standard. You guys good with that? I'm fine with either. It's up to what you want to do. Uh yeah, let's just get get out of the building, uh, unseen, and then we'll deal from there. Okay. All right, let's roll it, kids. Not so, a lot of help here. So Bye. risky standard. <laughs> Correct. I'm the healthiest helper. Uh, well, I'm no help. Womp womp. Oh, yes. six. <laughs> what? My You're guys. welcome, everybody. Take two <laughs> stress, and we get out clean. Yep. So Seer takes two stress, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I picture like he leads the way and like he's about to go out and like Jewel like pulls him back by just a second. And then like a spotlight or whatever like goes by. And then she lets him go and then we go out. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So then you guys are in the alleyway. Um, you can hear the sounds of like dogs barking and like you know, shufflings of, like, patrols. It's basically you're in the middle of, like, the dock lockdown. Bell ringing. Right? Yeah, right. Um, so there's a lot of people who are getting, like, under arrest and things like that. It's just, like, it's not a good place to be in. You don't want to be here at all right now. Um, but, I mean, you're already, like, kind of around a bunch of buildings that are kind of, like, rubble. Um, but now there's, like, mil like literally, like, Imperial Guards, um, you know, like, securing off different blocks and stuff like that and you can see in, in the big streets there's like checkpoints um for like any kind of like cabbies or um any any sort of like vehicle um going through um the canals are are in it in in the same kind of way like over the bridges there's like guards standing there um preventing anyone from going anywhere yeah your last chance will be getting to the sewers um you do know that um, an entrance to the sewers is lays kind of nearby. It, you remember this? The this is actually going to be the same entrance to the sewers that you came here to the gambling den a long time ago. Um, so that's going to be around here. But you just know have, you have to get through there. So you have to go through a bunch of alleys to get over there. You know that's like the closest and the best way um, for you to get out of here. But so you're you're kind of in like the first alleyway, and you know you're going to have to go across a um, a major street. I think to get to the other side and you know there's really like no no way around it this is probably going in the direction of crow's foot slash brightstone like you're going like into the city from the docks um but the question here is you have to cross a main thoroughfare kind of without being seen so you're in an alley what are you guys gonna do um does that sound okay like does the is the picture in your head okay does that make sense no yeah, yeah it makes perfect sense uh I, I i get some smoke bombs i that might help yeah totally i mean like you know it would it would draw attention but it would obscure us right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we could do it yeah all right. I mean, I it will draw attention, idea. but yeah, exactly. Oh, also, you shouldn't breathe this stuff in. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So, do you think that's going to be Prowl or Tinker? It sounds, it sounds like another group action using spoke bombs. I'll give you that. I think it's yeah. going to be. Um, I think it's Prowl. Standard effect again, because I think you can get across the street. Um. But I think it's going to get worse. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sorry. Yep. Um, 
So I think things are going to get worse uh, as, a, as a failure here, as people are like to be looking for you after you, you throw this smoke bomb. All right. So I think that's probably it's going to okay. become mostly just like completely desperate. But I think this is also a risky standard. Um, chances you're caught. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, are we are so so what group action is Seer leading us in? Is it is it a prowl just assisted by the smoke bomb? Or would like would he need a roll? Uh, I, I mean, would allow I, this. I, I would allow the prowl he... to be a tinker roll to get out of here because you know what I mean. Oh, okay. Okay. If that's if that's possible. I, I mean, um, sure. I would love to roll four dice instead listen, of one. Okay. So here's here's what I can say. It can I mean, be a you... group action. Or you could just be like, I'm going to throw my smoke bombs using Tinker to give mm, mm. the effect for everybody cover everyone's cover. Okay, essentially that makes setting sense. everyone up with Tinker and mm. then and then a group action of Prowl. That um, that sounds But the Tinker would allow idea. you to succeed as well. And I mean you can negotiate with me what you want your the effect yeah, yeah. of your, your roles to, right here. But like I said, you okay. have to cross the street. Um there's patrols and stuff around. It's very dangerous. But it's also dark. So, um, yeah. So, so I'm good with it being a setup for the rest of the group. Okay. Uh, so I'll go for the thinker. Just chuck a smoke bomb in the middle of the busy street, mm -hmm. and then uh, get through into confusion. Uh, input uh, for risky standard. Yeah. Ooh! Ooh thank God, I got five. Uh, uh, let's see something about yeah I mean the consequences of, consequences of failure will be um... I, I mean there there's one that we we have to get through the smoke and we will have to roll a resistance because that stuff chokes and yeah, blinds you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you have to deal with the chokingness of, of going through the smoke. That no, makes perfect sense. So you're going to resist, uh, fight a level one harm of coughing and stuff. Yep. Thank you. That sounds like, that's a, that's a great idea. Cool. So that's that's the problem. Um. So everyone, so you're going, not only, so you've set everyone up um, for, for a prowl to get out of here, but they're all going to have to make a resistance roll as well. All right. Uh, I can leave. Can I just accept the consequences and cough my way through there? Yeah, totally. Because I think I'd prefer that than a trauma. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Are you that high already on stress? Oh, yeah. What? I just took a shit ton of stress. All right. I, I started with three, and then I, I, and then I took like four more, so... Yeah, it's crazy how fast that stuff happens. That racks up. All right, uh, I'll I'll leave the prowl in again. Okay. Uh, the position. Yeah, smoking my effect. eyes. Our risky standard, so. Um, yeah. No, um, I think it's going to actually be a uh, risky great. Okay. I think you have a chance that um, people are going to be looking through the smoke that you can maybe get a clearing to the sewers. Sweet. All right, let's, let's do it. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you, you'll be in the clear if you can get through here with this roll. I'll, I'll push myself for this if that okay. makes it really clear. Sure. Pick the stress. I I was going to push myself, but now I have to make a resistance roll. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to pull off. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's a fucking crit, boys. Yeah, but it, I don't think crits happen in in group rolls. Yeah, they do. They, they do. They do. Yeah, they if do. It's from the same person. If it's from the same oh. person. Oh shit! You have to take a special move in order to have yeah. multiple sixes the, across multiple the people count as a crit. Move. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I rolled two sixes. That counts as a crit for the whole team. Oh shit! Nice. Cool. I may be um, hacking up my lungs as we run across the street. Yeah, but... let, let me also roll my prowess uh, to, to resist choking. Too much. I resolve to Unless... hold my breath the whole way, and that's in... why I suck at it. So I'm just like... <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> it, unless I can take like my, my whatever, I, the bonus from this crit, because we were already going to make it to the sewers to not take that stress, the 
to to not get smoke Definitely. in my eyes. Yeah, is that reasonable? Yeah, no that that's pretty reasonable. Was it crazy that you don't have to actually have to worry about the effects? Cool. Yeah, that you guys essentially get a free. Um, J just her or all of us? No, I think all of you because right. oh. you got a crit on the on the traversal. Sure. Yes. And so sure. I think that would represent um, you guys doing exceptional. I'll take it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> cool. Nice work, guys. All right, so you guys make it to the sewers, and I think there then we're gonna go to our break. All right. Cool. So we'll be back in five minutes.